in the last episode. Swim, Benson! We're almost at the shore! Come on, we can do this, buddy! We can do this! I don't know if I can make it, man. I don't know if I can make it. Hello, guys. My name is Eric Van Wilderman, and welcome back to Year Walk. So in this episode, we're going to go for the true end. Now, if you remember, at the end of the last episode, we got to the ending, but it wasn't really the ending because there's more for us to do. Um, it was kind of a sad ending where, where we got to the end, we killed our girlfriend, our guest kind of girlfriend, the girl that we loved who was going to go with another man. But um, we're going to get the true ending and it's going to turn out differently. And I'm not entirely sure how, but I got to go and find it. Because if you remember, they said there was a secret diary we got to find somewhere. So I'm going to try to find that. And as soon as I do, well... You'll see. Okay guys, so right here, basically when you start a new game and you get into the year walk, it shows this extra option, the journal. And you go to the journal and at the end of the playthrough I played, it says north of the mill, south of the brook. And it says username and password to access the journal. So what we have to do is north of the mill right here. I just found this. The, one sec, the Olm 68. So I'm guessing that's the username. The Olm 68. And south of the brook is down here, isn't it? And that's the password, 1894. So the password is 1894, and the username is the Olm 68 So let's go and put that into the journal. The Olm... Can, can I spell that properly now? The Olm 68 and 1894, and let's sign in. Yes, I got it! Okay, so we got it logged in and now what's it going to tell us so now we've accessed the journal and there are a ton of journal entries and so we're going to read through these and then we're going to find out the password to that box that we saw earlier uh in the playthrough like in the first episode so we find out what the password is to the box and then we're going to open the box and then we can uh, get to the true ending so let me just sift through these documents so there are a shitload of documents here like i'm talking an insane amount so if you don't want to see this just skip through Hello, new system. Testing photo uploaded. It works. I have no idea how this pertains to the password. Should probably write here more often. Read about every book on sweat or read about every book on Swedish folk there is. Surprised how little has been written about year walking. Need more sources or information. Talk to ES Eric something. <laughs> he suggested some field work. Might be good, but I feel that it might be 30 years too late. Been talking to elderly folks, eating cookies and drinking coffee. Their knowledge about your walking has been limited, to say the least. Barely any one of them knew what it was. If they did, they had heard stories as children, but forgotten the details. Thinking ES sent me on a wild goose chase. Interviews at the retirement home. May I never grow old. The last interview was intriguing, if very brief. Talk to one Astrid Jansen. She was over 100 years old. Clear at times. Did not know a lot about folklore, but she did claim that her grandfather's brother had once year walked. Sadly, she did not know his name. He had died many years before she was born. Might have to look into it. Her maiden name was Svensson, which leaves me with a lot of possibilities. She was born in Vedtorp, and I can only hope that her grandfather was well. More interviews. Nothing worth mentioning. Professor Asp called today. He hinted that the faculty wanted to take part in my research. So these pictures are probably important, but I'm just going to read these journals and then decipher for you at the end. Followed up by, uh, followed up my visit to the retirement home in the early 20th century, there were six households in Vedtorp with the surname Svensson, according to the church book. Astrid was born in 1913. Her grandfather was named Carl Frederick. He had two brothers. One died in 1942. The other brother, Daniel Svensson, died in 1895. Since Astrid said that her great uncle died before she was born, Daniel is the one supposedly year walked, a Miller apprentice going to the library to check out old newspapers tomorrow. You know what's really weird? This journal is talking about the future, died in 1942, but the thing is this game takes place in 1894. So it's kind of weird that we have a journal but we know the future about it. It's really strange. I'm not too I'm not putting that together. Look for reference of Daniel Svensson in old newspapers. I'm grasping for straws. Another day at the library, nothing of interest bored. I'm about to give up. Excited! The newspaper finally mentioned a Daniel Svensson. He was apparently arrested for the murder of a young woman in Ventorp. Ventorp dead, 21. Okay, I can't read that. It's probably Swedish. Information is scarce. Her name was Stina Nilsson, and she was a miller's daughter. <gasps> the daughter at the windmill! That's our girlfriend, Stina Nilsson! She was a miller's daughter. Her body was found on a field outside of the village. She had been stabbed multiple times. The library should be open longer. I hope I can find any reference to the supposed year walk. So, so we year walked, we tripped out, and we stabbed her multiple times and killed her. My goodness. 
The motive behind the murder seems to have been jealousy. Jealousy, yeah, because we're jealous that she was going to choose another man. My goodness, we did kill her. Not many details. Apparently, Stina was going to marry a Lucas Tapper. She was on her way home from Lucas's parents when she was intercepted by Daniel. So we are Daniel. She was found the following morning, just 17 years old. Oh, how young. That's so sad. I feel a tad guilty about my excitement yesterday. After all, there is a great tragedy behind all this. The press seemed to have lost interest in the case after a while. Found nothing today. Maybe ES can tell me something. Had a long talk on the phone with ES. The murder was unknown to him. He had, however, spent a lot of time in Bedrop during the 60s when he studied folklore in the area. There had been a rather peculiar runestone that seemed to predate the Viking Age. ES claims that there was a definite connection between the symbols on the stone and year walking. He could not tell me how. Wanted to check it out. Yeah, the Viking. Or er, not the Vikings, um, the, the runes that we've seen. Went to the library again, in case I missed something about Daniel. Indeed I had, found another article. Feeling upset and a little bit sad, borrowed the article just in case. Okay. Perhaps there is more to learn about Daniel. Booked a hotel room in Vedtorp. Arrived in Vedtorp, it's a small place. One street cuts through the village, it's a rather depressing place. To be fair, the weather would not do any plain justice. The hotel is empty beside me, and a group of dog toy manufacturers, who are a bit on the noisy side, must ask chef for veal recipe. <laughs> oh, you're sick. Got a map from the hotel owner, excited about the archive. Have the feeling that I will find something major. Just got back from the archive, an interesting place. Sadly, it's only open four hours a day. It's understandable since I was the only visitor. Possibly found the files I need. Tomorrow, reading and lots of it. I knew it! The archive has exceeded my wildest dreams. On New Year's Eve year, 1893, Daniel Svensson did indeed year walk. The court records refer to his year walk at several occasions. I have just started to scratch the surface. There must be beliefs hidden amongst these papers that have been forgotten for ages. Amazing. This is by far the latest recorded year walk. I hope I'm excused for borrowing the file from the archive. They gave me little choice since they are closed during the weekend. Okay, so our year walk apparently is late in the life of uh, this tradition. So I guess in the 1900s they just didn't do it. September 29th. Could not sleep last night. Too excited by the files. Much of the records are of a legal nature, but they are relevant passages. Daniel claimed he knew that he would murder Stina after seeing it in a vision on his year walk. So we saw it in the vision, and then we just did it. Oh, that's, why couldn't you control not doing it? <laughs> Sadly, the scribe is not bothered to take it all down. Occasionally just refers to it as ramblings of a madman. Poor boy. There are certain elements that are new to me. Must write them down in detail later on. Need fresh air. Daniel's cabin, Sol Sorten, is briefly mentioned in the protocol. We'll ask around about that. It. Hope it still exists. There's the box! That's the box we gotta open! So now, Drove around for hours in the forest today. These are woods to get lost in. Asked for the directions from every local. Most people never heard of the cabin. Was about to give up when I met an old man. His aunt had lived there till the 60s. From then, it had three different owners that used it as a summer house until the mid-80s. The last family that owned the cabin only stayed there one summer. That's probably our cabin. Their five-year-old son drowned in a brook nearby. I know where that brook is. That's where the horse was. Uh, okay, anyways, nobody has lived there since. The old man's nephew owned the land. I asked the old man if I could pay it a visit. He did not think there could be anyone that would mind. The cabin is situated deep into the forest. No sign, no road, just a narrow path. This was the place where he started his year walk over 100 years ago. Felt overwhelmed by the thought. Could not enter. It's a lonely place. The only other building I could find in the area was an underground storehouse. Guess it might have belonged to the cabin. It was too dark to see anything, but I can't imagine there would be anything of significance in there. On my way back to the car, I found this strange box. What an odd thing to leave in the middle of the forest. Seems to be in more or less mint condition. Could not resist taking it. Tonight, I need whiskey and lots of it. Wow. Well, that's not the answer to your problems. Went to Vedtorp Church today. It's a small white stone church built in the 12th century. The place where the church stands has been used for worship even earlier than that. According to the priest I met, he showed me around the premises. And that's at the end of the game that we got to is the church. Put a bouquet of flowers on Stina's grave. Seemed appropriate. The almost unlikely somber epitaph read, In memory of our loving daughter, Steina, Steina, Stina, Nilsson. <laughs> I don't know. 1877-1894. What a short life. Her cries for mercy could not sway his hand depressing. Searched for Daniel's grave, but there was no stone. According to the priest, there probably never was. The gravestone ES told me about are gone. The priest is not sure where they are or when they disappeared. Weather has been unreasonably bad. 
I'm glad. <laughs> I've been reading a lot, haven't I? Spent the day at the country archive, had trouble concentrating, tried to locate a photograph of Daniel Svensson, but no luck. The clerk explained that a lot of stuff was lost when the files were moved from the regional archive back in 1976. Apparently there was another murder case in Ventorp in the early 1890s. Elisa Rasmussen drowned four infants in a creek. She was an- Oh my god, yeah, that's the four babies that we found. Uh, wow. She was an angel maker who received foster children from poor unmarried mothers. Lisa promised to find the babies good homes in exchange for a hefty sum of money. This was all a charade. As soon as the mothers had paid what little they owed, she drowned their children in the nearby creek. All files from that trial have been lost. Outrageous. I think I'm done with the archive. Been thinking a lot about that church. That is fucked up. So she took money from people to take the children and she just drowned them? That is so fucked up. Strange day. The runestone ES talked about is not marked on any map. Talked to the man at the service station. He drew me a rather primitive map. Searched for the stone for a long time. Almost gave up. Found it at last. Felt compelled to touch it. Had the strangest sensation of looking beyond. Beyond what? The feeling lasted for quite some time. Heading home tomorrow. Wish I had more time. This stone is old. Might predate Christianity. But I fail to see how it is connected to year walking. Could not resist stopping by the church on my way home. Walked around it for a bit. It's a pretty church. Not remarkable, but there is something about it. Feel that the church and stone are connected somehow. Found the box when I unpacked. Had almost forgotten about it. It seems to have some lock-like construction, but I have yet to understand exactly what it is or how to open it. It reminds me of one of those puzzle boxes. The wheel with the symbol suggests it's open by entering a password. It must be old. Maybe ES knows something about it. Yes, tell me, please! Decided not to tell ES about the box. He might not appreciate that I took it with me. He's always nagging me about ethics. Busy week, classes and meetings. This faculty is really getting in the way of my research, feeling a bit strange. I've had weird dreams ever since I came back from Ventorp. Maybe you are having a year walk in your dreams. That'd be crazy. Dreamt that I was in a vast wasteland. I was searching for the keys to my locker together with Jenny from high school. We laughed and dug in the sand. Suddenly the sky lit up and, and <laughs> Jenny pointed to a simple constellation of stars. She whispered in my ear to never forget. Oh, that's like the runes that we've put into the rune thing in the last episode. I asked her what it meant, but she was dead and her bones were withered and old. Woke up and have been feeling rather queasy ever since. Well, it was a dream. That's fucked. Read an account of a year walk by a man named Romadal in an old book I came over in a used bookshop. Romadal's story is a little more than a tall tale told by a drunken oaf. Most of them seem to be. <laughs> Daniel sticks out. It haunts me. Held a lecture on year walking. Several faculty members attended it. They ridiculed me in front of the students. Pfft. Screw them, okay? Another strange dream. That's a dream. <laughs> Was doing my homework, was stressed because the oil lamp was running out of oil, and when it did, the pale horse outside the window would come inside. The lamp burned out and everything went black, woke up soaked in sweat. <gasps> the pale horse from the brook must remember to buy groceries. That's all October 16th, that's my birthday by the way. Fiddled with the box, I have no clue how to open it. Frustrating. What jealous, small-minded, greedy creatures the faculty members are, and they will undoubtedly create small-minded, jealous, and greedy students. Don't feel the need to share any of my research with the faculty anymore. They don't deserve to read something that my hand has written. They would not understand anyway. Oh, this person is becoming more and more twisted. Oh god. The thought of what is inside that box is like an itch that can't be scratched. I've searched for references to anything about it, but I have found nothing that resembles it at all. Having more strange dreams, something happened in those woods. Is year walking a mere vision quest? Are the visions brought on by lack of light and food? Yes, believe so. Not so sure. Dreamt of the runestone, was in the forest outside Ventorp. Mrs. Bowman was walking up to me. I was very afraid. She said that I had been a bad boy and broken the rules. Before I could defend myself and tell her that I did not mean to be naughty, she withered into dust. Found myself in front of the runestone. The Grimm's eyes glowed at me. Woke up. Found myself thinking of the stone. What does it mean and how is it connected to year walking? What did people do in these woods? Huh, I wonder when we're going to find out the password. Do not feel like sleeping tonight, drinking coffee and watching TV. If I stay awake, those dreams will stay away. Could not understand much of my students' presentations today. Must sleep. Someone is watching me all the time. Got an email reminder to deliver the texts for the game. Wrote seven or eight pages. Hopefully it's enough. Waiting. Don't know for what. Have a feeling that something is on its way. Received an odd email today. Brrr, a bunch of O's. 
Got over a thousand of these during last night. The email seems to have been stopped when my inbox was full. Don't know what it could mean. Maybe it's a prank by my students and they seem too unimaginative to come up with something like this. I don't think it will end here. Oopsies, I wanted to hit next. Oh my god. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I totally missed my place. We have a lot left. Is it some kind of threat? Called the priest, told him of my plight. He said that Vedtorp sometimes had a strange effect on people, but it rarely lasted. Do not think he understands. I was going to ask him about the box, but decided to hang up when he suggested I should see someone. Woke up last night. Heard near- or sorry. <laughs> heard baby screams from beneath the floorboards. Panicked. Managed to pry up some of the floorboards. The screaming stopped. The Watchers, the Night Raven, the Holdra, the Brook Horse, and the Church Grim. These are all the creatures that we can see in the encyclopedia. And in the game we've seen them too. There might be others, cannot be sure. Can they disguise themselves? Maybe they can read my mind. The Watchers, because they watch, that's what they do. But is it all they do? Okay, holy shit, so these creatures are starting to come for him too, or her, whoever it is. Year walk equals system error. Year walking works, but it was never meant to. It's against the rules. The universe blinked its eye and someone crossed all barriers that are known as time and space. The Watchers are watching, but who are watching the Watchers? How can you bend time and space? And this person draws a little diamond around. Rocket ship, time, space. <laughs> Got in a heated argument with yes. He is surprisingly scornful of my theories. Must remember that he is an old man and he might not be as open to new ideas any longer. He claims that it is impossible to gaze into the future. The future is not set. Nothing happens until it happens. Of course it's impossible to look into the future according to logic, but I'm not sure they are playing according to our rules. The Watchers are more than they appear, and less. They are real, yet they are unreal. They do not exist in the manner that this table and this chair exist. How do I know these things? Are they my thoughts? Am I writing this? I certainly did not draw this, but yet it's right there in my notebook. Interesting. Watchers or antibodies? Antibodies? Like antibodies of bad things? That's weird. Daniel broke the rules and he was punished. Okay, so he tried to see into the future too much. That's so fucked up. Held another lecture, the last one for a long while it seems. It's been decided that I need a break, but it matters not. I have more important things to do. I've been an idiot. Someone is playing with me. These shapes, it's the same as on the box. Did someone see me take it? Tried the symbols I have received, but the box remained shut. There must be more coming. Woke up last night, the telephone rang. Answered. Could not hear anyone. Hung up. It rang again. Answered. Could hear someone speak on the other side. Could not make out what was being said. The voice was too far away. Hung up. It kept ringing. Cut the cord. Bought whiskey, bought food, people stare. Don't want to go out there again. Too many know who I am. If you break the rules, there will be consequences. Wish I had not cut the cord on my phone. Need to hear a human voice. Don't dare to go out. This person is tripping balls. Holy shit. At first, I didn't even notice. One of the paintings in my living room has been replaced. Holy shit, that's fucked up. It must have happened during the 30 minutes I slept. Could not let my guard down. Someone was here or something. Will the antibodies come for me? Am I a virus in the eye of the universe? Boarded up the balcony and all the windows. Nothing can come in now, I hope. Shouldn't be possible, but someone was here again. I'm definitely being threatened. There was a knife on my kitchen table. Old, but sharp. I realize that the knife is his. We are connected. It's Daniel's. The church is central to this, and yet it is not. Perhaps the church itself is not important, but rather the energy of the place. Perhaps the gate is always there, but it's not a gate. Gates are meant to be open or closed. This is a rift in the fabric of the very existence of everything. But why allow it? Why does the universe or God or someone not shut the gate? If we're not meant to do it, why let us? I can hear the heart of the universe beating. What is happening? Feel like a worm under a big boot. I feel the shadow hanging over me, waiting to get crushed. She sings and I shall follow. She is trying to fool me. That I know. But I must get closer to her because then I get closer to the key that leads me to the heart of it all. I didn't steal the box because it begged me to take it with me. Daniel survived all the watchers sent by the universe. He was lured by the temptress, brought the innocence to the pale horse, unearthed the parasite, and finally faced the master of them all. But yet he was destroyed. Could it have gone any other way? Was he doomed from the start? Am I doomed? Is the future set or can it be altered? So that's interesting. We are looking into the future. We found something from the future and we're going to use that to change our outcome. So maybe when we change our outcome, we're actually going to change, like, this person actually finding. And there'll be, like, a paradox, because this person would never have found the journal. Or not found the journal, but I mean, like, uh, the person in the future would not have found the evidence about Daniel. And it's just crazy, trippy shit. Oh my god. 
must help him. It's the right thing to do. There is a bond between us. So he's going to write the things in the future and he's going to help us in the past. That is fucking crazy. Might have figured it out. Five watchers, five symbols, which means there is one more coming. So tired. Can't seem to hold my thoughts for any period of time. Should probably eat more often, but I must resist. It's important that I come prepared. The heart beats stronger, but I will break it and see beyond everything. In the end, it was the nature of man that got Daniel. Must free myself of all desires. That's how they get you. That's very Buddhist. Can love really be a weakness, or is it strength and the poor girl? It just seems unfair. Is there anything I can do if the future can be altered? Why not the past? Am I playing the heart of the fool in the cosmic play? And if so, to what purpose? Disconnected the microwave oven, just in case. <laughs> feeling absolute terror at the possibility that there is no purpose, no rhyme, no reason to any of it. Why me? The only way I can help him is if I break the rules. It will come at a price, but what do I care if I can rise above it all? So we are, he's gonna bend time and space. Saw her lifeless body. She is beautiful, even in death. Have been crying ever since. It all seems so needless, so cruel. Ready for anything. Don't care anymore. It's finally here, the last one. I woke up with this in my palm, tried to wash it out. It's a tattoo. Tested them in all different kinds of combinations, but I could not figure out how to do it. I must sleep. I will open that box tomorrow. Of course, so simple. Rotate the wheel and release when the symbol aligns with the grim in the order they were delivered to me. But why was it empty? I thought it was Daniel all along. I thought he was here, but it cannot have been he who sent me the password. It doesn't make sense. If the box was empty, it means it must be filled? I still do not understand who sent me the symbols. If it was not the boy, then it must have been the Watchers. But why are they toying with us, helping us in some perverse, twisted way? From the get-go, he was doomed. They got him at the very thought of your walking. But I think the girl can be saved. I put everything he needs in the box and locked it. I will leave it where I found it, where all of this started. If my mind is set on this, does it mean that I am doomed too? The rift is open, it wants me to go through packed my things. I wonder if I will ever come back. Whoa, is he taking pictures of the past? Sol Sorten. It's cold here. I wish I could light a fire, but I must do it right. Surprised how calm I feel. Only hours remain. It's midnight. <gasps> Holy shit, and that is the end. God damn it. Okay, so... I gotta go find this box and I gotta use the clues that I received to open it and I'm gonna go find those clues and then I'll show you what I found when we go to open the box but that was fucking intense holy shit okay so the symbols that we need to find are uh, right here starting at October 8th there's an upside down triangle and I believe the next one I found was October 30th this symbol right here the right words circle and there's some more coming up but <laughs> I don't know, I haven't searched them yet, so let's try to find them. So this one's a cross, I guess? No, this one's gotta be the next one, a rectangle. Okay, November 19th, rectangle. Uh, I don't think there's anything there. There should be two more. Here, uh, upwards facing triangle, the picture that's there. And then, there should be one more. Uh, where are you? That's not it. That's the one, the one on the hands, so the upside down thing. So I'm going to put those in in order, and then uh, we'll get the secret ending. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's put these in in order. So we need first one, upside down triangle. Next one, right half of a semicircle. The next one is the s square. The next one is the normal triangle, and the next one is an upside down semicircle. This one. Oh! <gasps> we got it! What's gonna happen? <gasps> no! Bed Torp murderer executed. Created in January 21st, yesterday morning, Blood Torp killer Daniel Svensson was executed at Christianstad Prison. He was found guilty for the heinous murder of young Stina Nilsson last year. The death sentence has been criticized by the highly renowned Dr. Helmer Lundbach, who stated that Daniel is suffering from an abnormal psych. He seems to have problems disconcerting the past from present, and his visions of terrible creatures something not uncommon among schizophrenics. Daniel cannot be held accountable for his actions and should be given treatment at an institution for the criminally insane. The execution was performed... Okay, so Daniel got executed after he killed uh, Stina, his girlfriend. 
The execution was performed by Gustav Dahlberg. This was his fourth execution. Last year, he was to perform the execution of the notorious Lisa Rasmussen, who was charged with the murder of four infants in Velter. Wow, oh, that's, and that's a connection. But who took her own life before the sentence could be carried out. Security has been improved greatly since. Daniel Svensson was composed during the whole process, besides the slightly shaking hands so common among the criminal type. You could not tell Daniel from any other young men. He sobbed loudly when he laid his head down low, but quickly regained his composure. A quick prayer and a swift, powerful stroke, and it was over. According to the attending priest, Granath, Daniel's last words were, I should have killed myself, then none of this would have happened. <gasps> oh my god, so we got a message from the future person who was researching this. You are long dead when I write this, and I have not yet been born. Yet we have a connection beyond life, death, space, and time. The impossible made possible by year walking. But the watchers always win. Even though you've not passed through the rift yet, they sense the urge and they want their sacrifice. I wish there could be another way. I am sorry, but for her there is still hope. You can save her. You know what you must do. <gasps> we have to kill ourselves with the knife! He put the knife in the box! <gasps> this is so fucked up! <gasps> so in the end, we just kill ourselves! Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! That is so crazy, guys. That is so crazy. The music's by Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, the same guy that... The name of the main character. So we basically, the researcher, sent all of that... Uh, well, he came back in time, actually. He ended his own life, pretty much, because he's in this world somewhere. He knew he was gonna die. And he came back, and he saved the girl, because he knew he was gonna die anyways, because the Watchers were watching him, the year-walking uh, mythological creatures... I guess not mythological because they're real. And so he came back in time and gave us everything that we needed to kill ourselves and make sure that the cycle didn't happen again so that we didn't kill our girlfriend. So we saved her, but we ended our own life to do so. Now that is true love. We did that to save her life. That is really fucked up because we were going to get executed anyways. So I mean, why not just kill ourselves right now and save uh, a girl's life? That is really fucked up. This game is fucked. I mean, it, it was good. Like, what an interesting story. How intricate for just a small, like, one hour long game. But damn. That's just messed up. In a really good way because I thought it was awesome. Anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this playthrough. It was a lot of fun for me to play. It was really interesting. The ending blew my goddamn mind off. Holy crap. I will see you in future videos on my channel. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, and as always, peace.